All right, how's it going everyone? This is Dominic, AKA Dozer. And what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to make these wall panels. Two, three, four. How to make these ceiling and these straddle trap panels. All right, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. However, this video is gonna be long, so it's gonna have many parts. All right, so I got my lumber for my panels. I got six one by four by eights. And I got eight one by three by eights. So right here we have the safe and sound, rock sole safe and sound. Four panels of that, for two are for the ceiling cloud and two are for a straddle that's gonna go, it's gonna straddle that line right there. Wall to ceiling, all right? Two of those. And then I got the OC703, two inch thick. Those are three inch thick, those are two inch thick, and I'm gonna build all the panels for those. And that right there, is a fucking shoe. No, there's two shoes. Holy fuck. Two shoes. And this place is a fucking war zone right now. Let's see what else we got over here. Sorry about the lighting, but corner brackets. I got 32 of those. Because I'm making eight panels. Stud finder. Various hooks for when I'm going to hang them on the wall. Some chain when I'm going to hang it up in that upper ceiling wall area. You'll see that later. Staples, staple gun, drill bits. Those are 80 pound hooks. Those are 120 pound hooks. Way more than what I need. That's uh, go-go juice. Using the Makita drill. All right. So yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna start cutting and measuring. All right, so the rock sole is gonna have 15 and a quarter that way, but join it up against the 47 inch piece of wood for the panels. I have the wood here and it's one by four by eight and it's one inch but really it's not it's three quarters of an inch thick the four inches is really three and a half inches and they are eight feet long but it's just that's really three quarters inch thick but they call it one inch and that's really three and a half but it's called a four inch okay so one by four by eight and i measure my 47 marks here And I got a little arrows where I'm going to be cutting for this one, and I'm going to be cutting for this one, and that's going to be like just a little piece of waste. All right. And I'm using this tool to make my straight lines all the way across. I don't have to do that, but if you want to be finicky because you want to have straight cuts, all right, I'll show you how to do that. You basically take your tool. All right. Sorry about the lighting. It butts right up against this flat, slide it along, and then you will use your pencil to mark right across there. Butt this up against there, come along to my 47 marks, right there, take my pencil, mark all the way across, 47 for that side, Forty-seven for that side. Now I do have a circular saw, but I'm going to be using my Black & Decker jigsaw for this, just because I'm in the basement. Uh, my circular saw is out in the shed, and this will work, I got a really nice blade on there. It's really good for cutting wood. Okay, it's a wood blade. Make sure you're using the right blades for the right job. All right, so here's my homemade saw horse. <laughs> the corner of my chair and this table. And I'm gonna cut right there. And for safety, I recommend some eye protection as well as earplugs if you're gonna be using saws and such. And anytime I'm using high power equipment, you know, operating saws and Chainsaws and things of that nature. I like to kick back a one cold one of whatever. Right here, I got some vanilla Java Porter, but from Atwater Brewery. All right, gonna be drinking that while I do my thing. So yeah, safety first, people. All right, so I got my wood cut for my safe and sound ceiling panels and such. Now for the OC703 panels. Those are gonna be 32 and 6 eighths. And that's for there, and then for the length. These are 53 and 4 eighths, all right? That's what I'm cutting for. You gotta be kind of strict on these because they're rigid fiberglass. And you can kind of squeeze them into lower tolerances, 
but I'm cutting at length and at width, okay? Um, pretty much exactly. This stuff is kind of squishy. You can squish it in. This stuff's a little bit more firm, all right? That's uh, got some nice firmness to it, like a board, okay? I mean, it's soft, but it's just rigid fiberglass, okay? So you got to be more accurate on your cut with this as far as your length and width. This right here, I cut it probably a hair short, like an eighth, not even, like a sixteenth shorter than what it needed to be, so it's going to fit in there kind of tight. And I'll be able to just smush it in to the panel frame. So I'm going to go cut this now. All right, for these I got the one by three by eights. And of course that's really three quarters inch thick by two and a half inches wide, all right? And that's two inches thick, so it's gonna be like a half inch of play in there, all right? And they're eight feet long. And I got eight pieces, which is just enough lumber for my dimensions, and I might have a little left over. A quick note when cutting for your longer lumber, and when you have like a longer panel like that, you always want to cut your longer lengths first. All right, well, it depends on what you're cutting, but for this situation, if you don't cut your longer lengths first, you're gonna screw yourself. All right, just trust me on this. So I'm gonna call my long lengths first, my 52 and 3 eighths, or whatever the fuck it was. And then I'm gonna cut my 32 and 6 eighths cuts. Otherwise, I'll end up screwing myself with the amount of lumber I have just know that that's a situation you might run into. So you need to be cautious when you're cutting your lumber so you don't screw up. All right. All right. So I got all my lumber cut. Now there are a couple other pieces of lumber I'm going to be using for spacers behind the panels. Those are two by two, which is sitting over there, but that's far from now. And right now I'm going to first, I'm going to start building those over there. My ceiling clouds and my straddle panels. And I'm going to be using that wood there. And I'm going to be using corner brackets. I'm going to use four packs. Each one has four. I'm building four panels. There's four corners. All right. So if there's four panels and there's four corners, it's four times four equals what? 16. So I have 16 corner brackets. All right. One of the main important aspects when cutting your lumber for your panels. All right is you need to add extra to the length, all right? If you're gonna be doing this kind of butt joint here, all right, you need to add your extra three quarters of an inch there and your extra three quarters of an inch over there, okay? Because, as you can see, it's gonna to have to extend past the panel in order for this to butt up against it, all right? So three quarters plus three quarters of an inch, if you're using the one inch thickness, which is really three quarters inch, you're gonna to need to add 1.5 because 3 quarters plus 3 quarters equals 1.5 inches so you'll need to add 1.5 inches to your length. In this situation this stuff's really really compressible. I only accounted for one of my 3 quarter inches alright. That means I cut this 3 quarters of an inch longer than my panel. That's because I want it to fit in there tight alright. Now that stuff over there you want to be pretty precise. So that I cut a full 1.5 inches longer on my lengths, okay? So measure twice, cut once, you've all heard it, most of you have, and you need to make sure you're doing this properly or you will screw yourself. And then you'll, well, you won't really screw yourself because if you do end up fucking up, which a lot of you probably will, you can always trim off whatever you don't. So let's say if I, this was a fuck up, I could trim off this little piece right here okay if I wanted to but this stuff is going to compress in there so I'm not really worried about it on this one however on those like I said that rigid fiberglass you need to make sure you don't fuck up or you will have to cut off like an inch possibly to get it to fit so I just thought I'd throw that in there so uh, run with it okay so corner brackets now personally I always pre-drill my holes but with this soft white wood you don't have to it's not really going to split, but it's just a habit, and uh, it produces a more quality job, if you ask me. And what you do for the corner bracket is, you line it up, you hold it here, you drill your first hole, all right, while holding onto this bracket. So I just hold onto this, and I drill into there. 
and then I put my screw in there and it's ready. All right. I do the same thing for this side, for this side, and for the other side. So I basically have it screwed on there. All right. I went ahead and drilled those in already. But for demonstration, I'm showing you this one. All right. Once you do that, it's already there. You don't have to try and hold it by yourself. It's already being held up. So then all you got to do is use your drill and then drill the rest of your holes. All right. Without even holding it. This will just speed up your whole process if you're going to be drilling, depending on the kind of wood you're using. Uh, personally, I'm going to do it like I said, but with this kind of wood, I could just screw it in. But I'm going to pre-drill. Now, my drill bit is longer than three quarters of an inch. But I can pretty much eye this. I'm only going in about that far, okay? So you don't want to drill all the way through your wood. I mean, you can if that's what you want to do, but you don't have to. So I'm only drilling as long as my screw is, and I'm just eyeing it, all right? So there's another little note you might want to take. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, and I'm going to hold the wood square, and I'm going to basically drill all my holes, drill my holes over there, over there, and over there. Then I'm going to switch over to my bit. What this does is it prevents you from switching between bit and drill. Drill bit, bit, drill bit, bit. Over and over just so you can screw a hole and then drill. And then screw another one and then drill. This is just a, a time saving thing that you can do if you're going to be drilling. About the drill I'm using, in case you're wondering, it's a Makita. Alright, it's got a little flashlight on it, LED. Alright, it came with two batteries. The 18 volt lithium ion all right it's got this charger plays music and stuff that's pretty awesome but uh it charges batteries real fast i got this one right here charged i got that one of course fully charged and when i got this thing it was like 270 when i was an automotive tech for chrysler for like four years i had one i still have it it's outside i'm not using that one right now i'm using this one but uh it lasted four years and it's still going and i used it multiple times i tore apart many vehicles the insides of many vehicles using just that one Makita. So there's a lot of brands out there, but this is the brand I use, all right, because it works for me and I had no problems with them. Um, other people may have a different experience. I'm using liquid nails and I am just going to be putting a dab right there. Just a small dab. Don't mind that hole. I kind of, I don't know what the fuck that was all about. But I'll put a dab here, just a little slide, and then it's going to mate up to there, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. For those of you, yes, there are some that may not know how to use this thing, all right? It's basically a caulking gun. And in order to use it, you gotta first cut off the tip here with a razor, which I already did, to the size that you want, all right, for your bead, because when it comes out, it's gonna be the size of the hole, right? But before you can even use this, you gotta puncture the seal in there, okay? So that's what this little thing on the front is for. You just stick it inside here, ram it in there and it punctures the seal because if you just cut the tip off and you put it in here and you start trying to use it you're going to get nowhere you got to pump well you might explode the thing i don't know but you need to make sure that you puncture it then you stick it in and go in and go to work all right all right so there's how much wood glue i'm using very small amount for this situation uh you probably don't want to do it on your carpet but i'm not worried about it because i didn't go off to the edges so it's not going to when i mate these together it's gonna flatten it out it shouldn't come past this edge here and it shouldn't come past the edge over here if it does I'll just catch it with my finger so I'm not really worried about the carpet plus I can get, always clean it off the carpet if I have to but I'm not gonna get it on the carpet so you might want to put some plastic under here or something like that or do it on some concrete but that's all I'm gonna use don't need a lot and now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it to the rest and put it together alright so we got a full panel complete here this is one of the ceiling clouds Panels that's going to be hanging above me. All right. A couple of ideas, other ideas. They do have plans for frameless ones. You can make ones that are frameless. Um, I'm using internal corner brackets, and these corner brackets are actually pretty beefed up. All right, but they're real cheap. They're two dollars for a pack of four at Lowe's. I mean, sorry, at Big Lots. Yeah, Big Lots, baby. So another thing that I could have done. All right, since these are really small and light is I could have just used wood glue and drilled a hole from here into here and I could have used one or two screws right there. Two screws over there, two screws over there, there and there with some wood glue, 
would have worked just fine. As a matter of fact, with one this small, I could get by with just using one screw and some wood glue right there and over there and over there. However, I wanted them to be pretty sturdy, all right, in case I ever move or in case I want to move them. And that's why I'm using the corner brackets, all right? Just another little idea for you. All right, now if you're pressed for time, I'm going to show you. Like I said, this is soft white wood. I don't really need to drill, and I'm going to show you that right now. There's an even faster way if you're not being too finicky about stuff. Now you're going to want to make sure you line this up perfectly, all right? That's not extending past your thing, all right? It's got to be flush. So do this at your own risk. But like I just line it up. Drill it in. Make sure you get this in the center. All right. Do that one. Do this one over here. Line it up. I have a magnetizer that magnetizes my snap-on. This is a snap-on Phillips bit, all right? If you're using a cheap one, it might strip out, but if you get a high-quality Mac or snap-on, you ain't got to worry about that kind of shit, but I do have a magnetizer that magnetizes the bit. Boom. Now I can just put my wig glue on, and then put my other screws in. Screw those in, good to go. I can make one of these and probably three or four minutes. All right, so when I made my uh, super chunk corner traps, I had some waste, basically it got cut off the ends. But I'm actually gonna use it to make a panel. As you can see, I'm sticking them in here. All right, just gonna line them up in there, and you can use them to make part of your panel. I got some more over there, and I'm gonna use to also. All right, so just to show you another way you can speed up your whole process, you can use an assembly line approach. And that is where you line them all up, you put your hardware on there, and you basically screw them in. You don't even need to drill, like I said, depending on the type of wood. Um, and you basically screw them all in. I'm going to drill, all right? But you don't have to. So, boom, all right? Those are your end caps. Then all you got to do is two of those will go on uh, the sides, and then those other two will go on two of the other sides. Simple as that. All right, so there's my four panels done already. Two of them are going to be the ceiling cloud, and two of them are going to be my straddle traps, basically straddling the ceiling to wall connection. And then the other two are going to be above this mixing area on the ceiling. So I'm going to continue on and build these other ones. Those should probably take me eh, 30 minutes, probably less.